Welcome to the UK Investor Magazine podcast, the latest on shares, markets and investments, now available on your Amazon Alexa. Hello and welcome to the UK Investor Magazine podcast, now also available on the UK Investor Magazine mobile app. For today's podcast, we're going to be exploring the opportunity in generative AI and an aim-listed company, GenIP. Uh, we're going to be looking at their operations, but we are going to be focusing predominantly on the wider market. And to do that, we're very kindly joined today by Lord David Willits, who is the non-executive chairman of GenIP. Lord Willits, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Thank you very much for the invitation, Jonathan. So before we get into it, David, and we start discussing the market and Gen IP, please would you be able to give us an introduction, first of all, to yourself as well as Gen IP, please? Yeah, well, I was I began my career as a, an official in the British Treasury and then worked for Margaret Thatcher in her number 10 policy unit, became an MP uh, in 1992 uh, and then served in the coalition government uh, as the Minister for Universities and Science. So having shadowed that as well beforehand, um, I, I really appreciated the opportunity of serving on what I think is one of Britain's great sectors. Our universities are widely respected. We have a fantastically productive research base. And after I stood down from the House of Commons in 2015 and David Cameron put me in the Lords, I thought that without kind of treading on the toes of my successors or getting in the way, I wanted to stay involved in universities and science in any ways that could be useful. And I've done a range of things, both commercial and also pro bono, things like I used to chair the British Science Association on their chat, now chair the Foundation for Science and Technology. Um, but I also do more commercial stuff. And this role with Gen IP is is one of those and it's it links the incredible advances particularly in generative ai um with british business and british opportunities thank you so i'd, I'd like to touch on that point that you make there and you know ask you you know what was it about gen ip that excited you when you first given the opportunity to join the board well there is so much talk about generative ai it's always good to see what it can do in practice and we already had on, on, in, on Tech Capital, on whose board I serve, we were already using this function for assessing um, technologies. And we're a very selective but successful investor in specific technologies. And we developed this capability. And we're already, um, it was already being used. We were marketing it to research institutes, commercial investors, universities. Um, but the idea of linking generative AI to it to improve its performance and efficiency and broaden our market and grow the company, that was a, a very exciting prospect. Let's talk a little bit now about Gen IP, if we may. Uh, how would you rate the progress so far, Lord Willett, since its launch in September of this year? Well... Uh, let me give you some figures. We've we've had over 195 orders for invention evaluator Genai analytical assessments, and it's great that we've we've got that interest in our product. We've also through Fortex, which is our recruitment arm linked to this, help because often one of the company challenges when you're growing these high tech startups is is finding the right team to work in them. We've already secured eight executive search assignments for Vortec. Um, so, yeah, we are finding, having only been marketing this for a few months, the answer is there's a lot of interest in our evaluated Gen AI analytical assessments um, and there's signs of healthy growth. You outlined your deep experience with universities at the beginning, Lord Willett. So I'd like to ask now, how Gen IP and how do you see Gen IP fitting into the technology transfer ecosystem? And what is the real value that it's offering technology transfer offices of research institutions? Well, if you are in, involved in trying to spot key new technologies and deciding whether to invest in them commercially or support them as a university, you can often be 
overwhelmed with the flow of propositions and not be confident that you've necessarily got the staff with the expertise to evaluate all of them. Um, and there's also, I guess, a, in the background, also an angle of to what extent you can be independent if you're appraising technologies emerging from your own university, for example. So where I think we can really help is we, we've got with our systems the capacity to analyze an incredibly wide range of technologies. It's done in a very efficient and speedy way during using generative AI, but we've also got genuine in-house experts who check stuff and you know don't let, let anything go through that isn't to the highest standards. And we are of course completely independent. So if you are sitting there with a whole range of propositions being put to you, having a quick, efficient, low cost, independent assessment of the potential of this particular technology applied in this particular way it is a, it's a really useful tool. It liberates your staff for other activities. And it, and it also, uh, to be frank, if you decide to invest, it's great to have the comfort of having an independent assessment that makes a case. And if you're not backing it, being able to say you've had an independent assessment and this has suggested the reasons why it's not quite right for you, that's also very helpful. Indeed. So you, of course, mentioned there you know, the independent evaluation, and that's being quite an important factor for technology transfer offices. And of course, you mentioned that they have to assess quite a high number of opportunities. But from where you're sitting, Lord Willits, what are the main challenges for technology transfer offices when they're assessing new technologies that are coming through and maybe some challenges in the wider ecosystem for technology transfer offices? Well, and I basically support technology transfer offices, by the way. Let me, let me make that clear. I think we need them and they're very useful. And this is a tool to help them work um, even more effectively. But I, I would say they face two kind of contrasting dilemmas. The first dilemma is a, is a, a massive flow of material from the university or research institute's own research staff, which is very hard to evaluate independently and where you may not have many experts other than the people who are sending you the proposal in the first place. So there's a sort of volume constraint. And then uh, at the other end of the scale, sometimes the problem is the opposite, which is this may not be an institute or a university which has many propositions. And when they turn up, you don't necessarily have people with the experience and expertise to assess them. So so I think we can we can help technology transfer offices face uh, overcoming a range of problems, not in order totally to displace them. Ultimately, there is always human judgment, but to give them really useful analytical uh, capacity, you know, a, a 40 page report within 10 working days uh, that's been scanned and assessed by an expert already and that draws on a deep knowledge of what's happening in the particular area that the, um, which is being put to you. That's a really useful resource. Indeed, indeed. So, Lord Willits, you've been at the forefront of innovation for many years. Where does generative AI sit for you personally in terms of the innovation, uh, the broad market applications for any other technology that you've worked with previously? I think it's very exciting. It's It's got enormous efficiency gains. Nobody is saying it can do, uh, it's not, it, it can't necessarily do absolutely everything, but it has, it, it's, and I think the reason why people find it so interesting it's it, there was always a paradox about technology. There, everybody, all these technologists and te technology visionaries were talking about how radical the world, radically the world was going to change, and how it was going to boost. They were going to boost productivity. And meanwhile, in their own backyard, in the whole area of technology appraisal, there wasn't much um, mm. innovation, and there wasn't much productivity improvement. So, I think what's really interesting is that, ironically, we show how um, technologists people working on technology appraisal can themselves benefit from the application of new technology. Thank you. And, and finally, to finish off now, Lord Willits, what goals would you like to see Gen IP achieve over the next year? Well, I hope we can carry on growing, going rapidly. I hope also that we can just make ourselves useful. 
around the world, uh, and we're not a specifically UK market, around the world where there are lots of people who have, an, have a flow of these proposals and really don't know how to set about appraising them. We solve that problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. So just a note to listeners, CEO Melissa Cruz did present on the UK Investor Magazine Virtual Investor Evening a few weeks ago. So if you check out the video section of the UK Investor Magazine website, you'll be able to see that presentation and get further details on the Gen IP investment case. So Lord Willits, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Thank you very much, Jonathan. See you soon, uh, I hope. Yes, yes, certainly. And I'm wishing you a very happy Christmas. And thank you very much to everyone for listening. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed listening to the UK Investor Magazine podcast. Please do share the podcast and we really value any reviews and comments you leave us in your chosen podcast player. The views presented by the hosts and guests of the UK Investor Magazine podcast are in no way investment advice. And please remember all investment involves risk.